Sounds loud. Hey, Shalom Israel, Most High in Christ Bless. Captain Yahshua here. I got uh Shalom, Shalom Israel, Most High in Christ Bless. Glad to be here. Me and AZ holding it down. Captain Yahshua is about to bring out a beautiful class for y'all. Y'all stay tuned. Yeah, it's this is the sincere milk in the morning. Sincere milk in the morning. <laughs> All praises. I know, man, I finished I finished my coffee as I was waiting with the technical difficulty yeah, here. You know, my cup of coffee. Good morning, too. Shalom. Yeah, so I got Captain Isaac visiting me here um, in Arizona. So all praise to the Most High Christ for that being that we started so late. Um, we're going to just jump right in, all right? So today's class is titled uh, Virtue and Godliness, Making Your Calling and Election Sure, all right? Um, a lot of times we throw that word around. You see the word in the scripture where it talks about godliness, Um Godliness and virtue go together, right? And, you know, a lot of us, we may think we know definitions. I'm very big on bringing definitions out, um, especially in the English language, right? There's like 20 words, you got synonyms and stuff like that. And we might be able to use the word in a sentence, we might be able to say something, but really getting the sense, um, I think a lot of our people don't understand that. We don't understand what that godliness and what that virtue really means. So Lord's will, uh, you'll be edified and we'll talk about that today. So let me get the book of Second Peter. Uh, chapter one, and we're going to start with verse one, the points in three, but we'll start with verse one. All right. While you do that, let me get my dictionary up. All right. All right. This is the book of second Peter. Chapter one and verse one it says Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ right so Peter here he says I'm an apostle of Christ and I'm addressing what I'm about to tell you to them who have obtained like precious faith with us through righteousness all right of God our Savior Jesus Christ we understand in all things he's speaking to the Israelites here all right so go ahead grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. And and you have to, you know, I, I often say every single word in the Bible was put there meticulously. When you read, um, and, and when it talks about no, um, it came by divine inspiration. No man woke up in the morning in the scripture and said, hey, I'm going to add a chapter to the Bible today of my own volition. All right. It says, Grace and peace is multiplied through the knowledge of God and Jesus Christ, all right? Not through hugs and kisses, not through uh, philosophies of men, okay? Following after uh, brothers and sisters based on a feeling or a vibe. He says, grace and peace is multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and Jesus, our Lord. Read. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godly all right all things mm. every piece tool that you need right you know like sometimes you'll you'll uh you'll, you'll buy something that you got to put together right and it'll say uh some tools required you might need a, a pliers you might need a screwdriver you might need something like that the scripture is telling you through the scriptures through the spirit of uh the most high in christ all things that you need that pertain unto eternal life and, and godliness mm -hmm. go ahead through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Right. So there's two words that are used there. Okay. And it's godliness and virtue in that verse. Right. So godliness, Christianity will teach you godliness is dealing with, um, oh, just being, you know, pious and, you know, uh, 
not, you know, giving to the poor, giving to the needy, doing soup kitchens. You know how many people this week are going to be doing stuff like that, thinking that they're doing something? I was reading something in the news this morning. I get, like, the top five things from CNN in, in my email in the morning, and they're talking about uh, they're talking about all the shootings that happen. And then they say, oh, on a week that's supposed to be about peace and harmony. That's what they're calling the Thanksgiving holiday, on a week that's about peace and harmony. It's like, you out of your mind? This is a week about massacre and bloodshed. But, but the point that I want to get to is that the misperception that's put out there. So godliness is put out there, and nobody really understands what that means. Nobody, I think, has ever bothered to look that up. So I found this interesting, right? I'll read the second definition first. It says, conf, conf, coming from God, divine. And that's what most people think of. Mm -hmm. Okay, it just means coming from God, divine. That still don't mean anything. What the hell does that mean? It says, conforming to the laws and wishes of God. Mm -hmm. That's what it means to be devout and pious. It says conforming to the laws and wishes of God. That's what makes you godly. That is godliness. All right. Get uh, read on. Read verse four. Verse four. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. Those promises are what? <clears throat> the promise of the kingdom. Okay. The, the contract, the covenant that we have with the most high. Because this is what's important, right? When you read godliness, it says that we're going to conform to the laws and wishes of God. It's not really wishes. That's the one part I don't like. Mm -hmm. God gives orders and commands, all right? He don't wish you do anything. You do it or the hell with you. And you see his judgment if you don't. So uh, that's the one part of definition I don't like when it says mm -hmm. wishes. It makes them seem soft, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a contract. A covenant is a contract that we got with God. And with the most high, we have requirements, all right? There are things we must do. There's no you know, here he loves us and that's it. Uh, uh, and that's all you have to do. We, we, those of you who have been in this for any measure of time should understand that by now. The most high requires things of us. All right. Um, where are we at? Okay. Hold that. Uh, no, continue, continue. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these, ye might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Now that's heavy, right? What's being said here, right? We started off, he's telling you, listen, listen, Israel, all the tools that you need to, to obtain eternal life are in this scripture, okay? And, and in that, you need to understand what godliness and virtue are. And he says, and we have great and precious promises of the kingdom to come, of that contract, of that promise, all right, that the Most High made to Abraham, and he says, uh, he goes on and he says, we might be partakers of the divine nature, all right? What's to come? He goes, because that divine nature helps you escape the corruption that's in this world. What he's really telling you, and there's plenty of scriptures that give you that, is that this place is polluted. You see the Micah 2 and 10 when it says, uh, this is not your rest. It tells you it's not your rest because it's polluted. You see that uh, where it talks about evil communication corrupts good manners. So we understand that anything that comes that's not from the most high, that's not divine, that's not godly, all right? It's corrupted. It's polluted. You're not going to be, you can't pull something good out of something bad. This is why that baptism of holy fire has to happen. John said Christ is going to come and baptize with fire. All right. The most I told you, he's going to cleanse the earth with fire because it's so polluted and it's so corrupted that you're not going to be able to, to salvage anything. The fallacy <laughs> that Christ is going to come and negotiate with, with people that are here now today, it's not going to go that way. All right. Get me Deuteronomy 28 and 1. Because right? we're talking about those promises real quick. <clears throat> I want to bring that up briefly. Deuteronomy 28 and 1. This is by uh, First Daily Bread. I know somebody posted their uh, Northern Kingdom getting it in. <laughs> uh, oh, praises. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments. Remember what the definition of godliness is, all right? It says conforming to God's laws and wishes, all right? And again, and I... I'm going to say it because that's the definition. I just don't like when it says wishes. But conforming to God's law and wishes, right? So it says, listen, this is what's going to come to me. Oftentimes we read Deuteronomy 28 and clearly we talk about the curses, right? Because that's our sign. That's our identity. We need that type of information. But a lot of times I think we, we, we often forget the promises of the kingdom. And, and every now and then you got to put yourself into a mind to read that 
so you can understand the reward that's at the end as much as is possible with our carnal minds to understand what's in store for us right go ahead read which i command thee this day that the lord thy god will set thee on high above all nations of the earth these are the promises that we're reading about in second peters he says whereby are giving to us exceeding great and precious promises that we will be above all nations that are on the face of the earth and you understand moses is addressing the israelites here in the wilderness we know who those are today right that's us so-called blacks hispanics native americans and he's telling you here above all nations is the exceeding great promise that is there for us give me first thessalonians 2 and 12 that's all i wanted on that like, bro cap and by all means bro you want to bring anything out bring it out all right definitely you know we've taught together before bro bring it out if you got something so first thessalonians 2 and 12 is what i want first thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 12 that ye would walk worthy of god who hath called you unto his kingdom and glory. And this is what you must understand. There's a sense of worth that we must achieve, right? These are the promises that we must uh, uh, subscri uh, um, subscribe and obtain and try to obtain to, right? This is what we strive for. Last week, I did a class here. Um, I don't know if it was this past Saturday or maybe the Saturday before in Phoenix and part of the pre-class. And I was talking about in Luke where Christ talks about, you know, that we must strive to enter in at the, at the straight gate, at the narrow gate. And when you look up strive, you know, I'm asking the brothers, you know, what's that mean? And everybody's like, oh, that means, you know, work hard, this. I said, that's too soft. That's too mamby-pamby. Strive means to fight, that this is a fight. To strive to enter in at that narrow gate is something that we must fight to do. This is what that virtue and that godliness, that divine nature that puts you in that frame of mind to do that stuff. I remember some years ago, Captain Isaac, you gave mm -hmm. a class uh, on the Godhead mentality, mm -hmm. right? And you know, I had read it before at that point when you when you had given the class, but but seeing that thing, it's like I don't, I don't think people understand exactly where we need to get our mind and our thoughts to. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, the scripture does say that our thoughts are not his thoughts; his ways are higher. Mm -hmm. But once the promises of the kingdom are fulfilled, it's telling you that our mindset will be at that level. But while we are here, we need to obtain and strive to be that way. Right? Mm -hmm. Read that verse again. Verse verse twelve that ye would walk worthy of God who hath called you unto his kingdom and glory. You've been called, and God says you must walk worthy, which is dealing with what? That godliness and that virtue that we started reading about in Peter's. Let's go back to 2 Peter's now. All right, one, and let's read verse four again. 2 Peter's? Mm-hmm. 2 <clears throat> Peter's chapter one, and verse four, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. This is how we will be partakers of the divine nature, the exceeding great promise of being above all nations. All right. Ha having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So I want to deal with that part now. Right. So it says having escaped the corruption having escaped the corruption from this present world so let me get and, and we're going to keep jumping back and forth a little bit to second peters let me get second corinthians 6 and 17. so how do we do that right remember i read the definition of godliness and godliness says what it says conforming to the laws and wishes of god so now we're giving you those steps precept upon precept of how you obtain to that all right second corinthians 6 17. 2 Corinthians 6, 17, wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. All right, so it says come out <clears throat> from among them and be ye separate. We're reading here in Peter's where it says you must escape the corruption that is in this world through lust. And I always like to put in remembrance to brothers and sisters mind. We automatically, when we think lust, think sexual lust, all right? We think sexual immorality. Lust is anything that your heart desires that is contrary to what the scripture says. So lust could be lust for alcohol. Lust could be lust because you have a thieving spirit. You could have a lust could be because you're a compulsive liar, right? That's the term they use where you just can't help yourself. You just, you just gotta make stuff up, mm -hmm. right? Uh, for for whatever for whatever it is filthy lucre mm -hmm. so so maybe maybe it has something to do with uh 
pushing business, pushing your money, people behind stuff like that. Mm -hmm. All right. These are the lusts that we must escape. And sometimes the lines get blurred because you forget what godliness really means. And it, you can't let your own mind, you can't let yourself wear the scripture that talks about, uh, um, uh, about the counsel of your own mind. Counsel of your own heart, right? Uh, I, can't, I can't remember exactly where it's at. Um, but it talks about that. And then it goes on and says what? Um, and maybe it's a different scripture, but there's another scripture uh, that talks about that's what the evil suspicion starts to take over in your head. All right. That's the corruption that is ever present that we must battle. Right. Christ says that from within is what corrupts you, is what defiles you. It's not just the sin that's inside of you, but it's your whole mindset. All right. Yeah. Don't even worry about looking for it. All right. It's your whole mindset of how you approach this walk. This is why I said it, we're going to discuss virtual <laughs> godliness, but we have to really put in a strong effort. I think, you know, a lot of people, it's just you, you, you lose that first love that you came into the truth with sometimes. Mm -hmm. And it's not intentional. Like you can be here, you can be consistent in keeping the Sabbath, the holy days, wearing your friend. You might be an actively involved brother or sister, mm -hmm. but you're not operating with a sense of urgency. You're not operating like the time is short. You, all right? you, you, you become uh, lukewarm. Lukewarm. That's exactly what it hot. is. You That's exactly what it is. You got to stay hot. And, and whatever that motivation may be, I often say there's levels to it, right? First, it's fear that gets you repenting. Then as you're in this, your faith gets built up. And then it's not just your faith in the most high, but faith in what you see and, and how you see the body growing and how you see the word spreading. Mm -hmm. And then all those things is what should keep you on that straight path and that narrow path. Mm -hmm. But then you let other things, the lust of other things, the different cares, like you read in Mark 4, start to creep in. And then that's the stuff that pulls you out. Why? Because you were walking in a corrupt, corruptible world and you must have that whole armor on. You must have your guard up at all times in order to stay in the right mindset, that divine nature mindset to deal with what's around you. You cannot be complacent. Once you get complacent, once the guard is down, you must always be circumspect. That's when Satan comes in and he's going to try to lunge at you and he let, and he takes root. And that's how you wind up with some BS doctrine that makes no damn sense. Mm -hmm. You wind up uh, 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 <clears throat> trying to justify your stuff, not scripturally, Mm -hmm. because you wind up, the scriptures come out, it's too strong, you can't, you can't fight the scriptures, right? Mm -hmm. So then you start trying to come up with other things, right? Like videos of showing uh, uh, the horizon, the horizon yep. moon and dark, yep. madness like that, or, or sit here for, for four years and then talk about, I'm coming out of being a Seventh-day Adventist, where even in my wickedness, uh, I believed that the Sabbath, and I celebrated it from Friday, because that's the one thing that Seventh-day Adventists got going for them. Is that they observe the Sabbath day, right? I don't know if they don't cook or sell, but they mm -hmm. at least observe it as the day to congregate, right? Yeah. The one thing they got going for them. And then you're going to have a brother four years later <clears> talk about, I've always struggled with the Sabbath being dark to dark. Want to go back to sun worship. Uh, Want to go back to, that's what, hey, hey, that's the corruptible world. That's the lack of the divine nature that lets that stuff creep in and lets you bug the hell out with that stuff, all mm -hmm. right? Where we at? Uh, as you said, 2 Corinthians 6, verse 17. Yeah, read it again. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. You must not touch the unclean thing. You cannot let these things, you know, whether it's science, whether it's uh, 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 the suspicion in your mind, like being wise in the counsel of your own mind, and let a true doctrine, all right, that you've obtained to, Start to change your mind, all right? Yeah, brother says spreading heresies. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's how you, you, it makes you, right? Sometimes you look at this thing and you go, damn, how could a brother be with us so long and then jump into a position where they're spreading heresies? All right? The scripture tells you why here. Go ahead and get me uh, Matthew 5, 13, and 16. You must be separate, not just from people, not just from, you know, when we say be separate from the world, Christ tells you make friend of mammon. Mm -hmm. Some people go to the extreme. I remember first coming in, brothers was cutting off all their whole family and mm -hmm. stuff like that. No, you have to be an example to those that are without the knowledge and everything like that. How can you be an example to them if, if you're never going to talk to them, you're never going to see them? The scripture just tells you uh, uh, when you're among the, the indiscreet, just be mm -hmm. mindful of the time. It just tells you to go ahead and make sure that you're conscious of where you're at. Okay. It, don't talk about just cutting all that off. We got to be able to go ahead and, and, understand that being separate means also being separate from those lies, those philosophies of men, right? That, that you'll be spoiled. The rudiments, like it talks about in Colossians, 
And when you look up the definition of rudiment, it says in part, not full. All right. Me meaning there might be something there that was once predicated on something truthful, but it's not the full understanding, right? Christianity is a perfect example of that, right? Yeah, they got the part about at least there is a Christ, okay? And they propose to use the Bible, but it's part and partial. That's why you can look at some denominations and they'll do something like Adventists and they'll do one thing and you'll say, oh, okay, Jehovah's, you know, uh, sometimes they'll follow the dress code, whatever it might be. That's why you can look at something like that and see shades of what the scripture tells you to do, but not the full thing. Those are rudiments, all right? That's how you identify that these, these false doctrines, these heresies that are put out, okay? That they're rudiments, meaning it's not full, it's not complete, it's not it's not the full thing. That's how you can distort and take a scripture and and, and twist it up. Give me Matthew five thirteen. Matthew five thirteen, ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? Right. So the salt, salt brings out right, and creates contrast for a lot of flavors. Right. Those of you who know how to cook, okay. The salt's like the base ingredient for everything, okay? Like, if you try salt-free cooking, man, a lot of times, I mean, I'm sure there's other things you could do, but, mm -hmm. like, you know, if I'm salt, there's nothing like salt, pepper, maybe a little garlic, okay? But salt is that main thing that stimulates something. It says that's what we are. That's part of that divine nature. That meaning this world will be corruptible until we are set up, all mm -hmm. right? Because we're the thing that's going to go ahead and bring that proper understanding. The scripture tells you that... This is our wisdom in the sight of the nations. So it's very important that we understand the nuancedness of what we're up against and where we're at. So it says, if the salt lost the savor, then wherefore it should be salted. Go ahead. It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Thus having the salt, having savor pertains to that godliness, pertains to that conforming to them. That's what makes, right? Because just being Israel makes us the salt. But without these laws, statutes, and commandments, there's no savor. He says, so just knowing that you're Israel, that's not enough. He was like, you might, be, you might as well be tossed out, trodden underfoot, all right? What good is the salt if you can't do what the salt's supposed to do? Like, you, you know, uh, imagine salt that didn't taste like it. Look like salt, smell like salt, don't do what salt do. Hmm. It, it, it doesn't make sense, all right? Uh, go ahead, read on. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. We need to stand above that. If we are in that corruptible world, in that corruptible place, our godliness is what illuminates us. This is why these statues, these commandments, and, and, and it's not just walking around with fringes, walking around with the beard or what have you. It's in your behavior and in your actions and how you carry yourself that you're going to go ahead and let that light shine. All right. But what he's telling you here is that if your mind is where it needs to be, if your focus is where it needs to be on godliness and virtue, you're not going to be able to hide that light. There's no way that you can. All right? Go ahead. Read. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel. Because you are illuminated once you start to keep these commandments. So he's telling you, listen, you don't go ahead and, and, and become born again and change your whole mind and your paradigm and understand these scriptures fully and then try to hide that thing and put it under a bushel, right? This is why I want you to understand the reason I'm bringing this out is separate doesn't mean alone. Separate doesn't mean when it says be separate, let me just get away from everything and everyone. Where do you think uh, uh, the Israelites is coming from? The same place you did when you were pulled out the world. Imagine if everybody had that mentality that being separate meant, let me move to another country and, and do my own thing where nobody will see me. Then, then, then none of us would repent. Mm -hmm. This is why Christ commanded us, this is why he's saying this. Because we have to go ahead and let that example shine. All right, go ahead. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick and giveth light unto all that are in the house. The house of Israel. This is why it has to be put on that candlestick. You do not get illuminated for yourself only. All right. You, go ahead. Not to cut you off, Cap. Also, because there might be another. I can say might. All right. I'm assuming now. Okay, um, it might be a doctrine coming out soon that you do not have to go out on the, the highways and byways like Christ commanded, because that's what the scribes did. I heard a brother say, I heard a brother say that. All right, so I'm just warning y'all. When Christ said, "Ye go out into the world and unto all nations and baptize 
and, ba and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, he wasn't only speaking to the scribes. Okay, the scribes were from the tribe of Levi. You had Peter, you had John, you had all the other apostles that were from different tribes. When it says to go out and teach the nations, that's exactly what Christ is talking oh, about. Oh, my goodness. So that's that's the new thing that's simmering, huh? Yep. I was like, hey, I'm telling you, this is why you must, why do you think Peter's saying this? That's the other thing you got to put into your mind. It's not just going to come from people that are like, that you would suspect. It's not just going to be the Christian pastor, right? It's not just going to be the Islam pastor, uh, 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 what do you call it? Imam, Imam, mm -hmm. all right? It's going to be from people, those wolves in sheep's clothing that Christ spoke about. Mm -hmm. People that are going to come, you know, I had done another class talking about those who come uh, uh, professing to be Christ. And, and on the bigger scale, we look at that with literally, right? You have, you have extremes to that. There's level, I say there's levels to everything in this world, in this life, in these scriptures. You have levels to that. You have the people who come and actually will say they're Christ, right? Then you have people who come who say they, I come in the name of Christ. Mm -hmm. And then you have those who will never say, I am Christ, mm -hmm. but they'll purport to say that what they're bringing to you is Christ-like. And that's the same thing when it says, beware of those that, that come. Uh, uh, that way, all right? Those are false Christ, false Christ, because what? It's talking about saviors. He says, those are false saviors. Someone's going to come <laughs> and tell you, you have to go ahead and observe a daytime Sabbath or you will not be saved. You have to go ahead and know you don't got to go out and teach on the street. That's contrary to what we're, what we're teaching here. You're telling, you're telling me that all I got to do is walk around dressed in fringes or whatever and, and, and be okay? See, that's rudiments, brothers and sisters. Look up the definition of rudiment. You got to open your eyes and sometimes that from within yourself, this is why he said that wolves in sheep's clothing. Yeah, you want to get historically and you understand that's dealing with the Pharisees and stuff. Listen, the scripture is eternal. It's for today. It's for generations mm -hmm. as well. You are going to have people like you read later in the New Testament that will creep in unawares and you never understood. They didn't even know that that. You seen the Manchurian Candidate? You remember that movie, mm -hmm. the Manchurian Candidate? That's a remake. I like the one with Denzel though because mm -hmm. it's Denzel. He didn't even know that he was an agent. He didn't know. He was programmed, something inside. A lot of brothers don't realize that they are fulfilling their role. These brothers out there pushing heresies and things like that. That's why we say, bye, go. Because they will never understand that their only purpose here was to be activated. Mm. And, to, and, and to fulfill that role and do that thing and say, okay, now it's time to pull some people away. I tell you, I love it when this stuff happens. Initially, it's a little bit of a headache, right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, gosh, all this BS that's going on. I love it when this stuff happens because in my years in this walk, right, I've seen every time there's a falling away, it's just, it's beautiful. The, mm -hmm. the most high structure and law, his harmony is beautiful because it tells you that there has to be a falling away before the end will come. And that's the way he works with everything. Mm -hmm. There's always a pruning. There's always a falling away before a new level of growth comes. So what I see as all this is going on as I'm excited for what the future holds for, for, for the body of Christ, the true body of Christ mm -hmm. and where we headed and what we're going to do. I mean, uh, who, who knows what next year we're going to do, where we're going to break ground, where we're going to continue to cultivate where we've broken ground. Mm -hmm. It's going to be taken to another level when you see stuff like this. So uh, rejoice when you see things like this. Rejoice. Um, go ahead. Read on. I want to go to 16. Um, Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. So he says, you have to let the, shine, the light shine so they can see your good works. This is the point of the whole few passages that we've read. If you cannot be seen, if it's not being put out there in a platform, in a medium where, where you're doing your best to maximize that light, all right, taking it to the places, the dark places that it needs to be taken to, Right? Then what good is it? That's the point that he's making. He says, and this is how you glorify your father. This is God's wishes. That is godliness to do that. To go ahead and teach on the street. I pray that doctrine don't come out on the rise, man. To go ahead and teach on the street like that, mm -hmm. that's where godliness comes into play. That's where letting that light, it, that, that's the foundation of it all. Because you know why? Nobody does that. You people see that, yeah, you got your scoffers or whatever, right? But most people, they're like, damn, you get to a point where it's like, these brothers been coming here for, for two, three years. How many times you see brothers that start cursing you out? And Nicky Malachi was like that. Mm -hmm. Malachi, that's Nicky Malachi's story. He used to curse him out. Hey, you blowing up my business. Yeah, I'm not going to blow him up, but you know his business wasn't proper. Mm -hmm. Okay. He wasn't selling pizza 
<laughs> in front of where they were teaching, all right? And he's blowing up my business. And, and, and mad as hell. And then all of a sudden, he's like, damn, you know, these brothers, they come into the places where nobody else will come. They actually put in their, their, their proverbial money where their mouth is as far as, hey, I'm not just going to talk about helping my people. I'm going to be there where they at, bringing this message to them, all right? This is That's why Christ called us the fishermen of men. Okay, you can't sit in your house and fish. Or you have to actually go to the sea, go to the ocean, go to the waters, and fish. And you got to have patience while doing it. Right. Hey, that's heavy that you said that. Give me Ephesians 5.11. You can't fish in your house. <laughs> Dry land. Ephesians 5 and 11. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 11. He said people who implement that doctrine is because they weak teachers. Or some of them may have never taught on the street at all, or once. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ephesians 5 and 11. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. It says now. this Now we're talking about, we're defining what it means to be separate, okay? Mm. It says, don't have fellowships with the unfruitful works of darkness, okay? The unfruitful works of darkness. Go ahead. But rather reprove them and again this has levels this could go from your friend that's jake this could go to your family that's jake this could go from a brother or sister that's within the midst of you in the body and preaching heresies mm -hmm. biding their time and preaching stuff a lot of times brothers and sisters y'all don't want to be confrontational mm -hmm. right it could be a well-meaning brother or sister and they just don't want to deal with the confrontation mm -hmm. And, you know, they'll come and maybe they'll say something. And we've mm -hmm. seen that. A lot of people are coming to us. It, see, because you have people who go out there and, and they're talking crap and bringing out heresies. And they think we're watching them like the way they watch us. And we're actually not. They have, we have people who are bringing that stuff to our attention and saying, hey, whatever. And you know what our advice is now, mm -hmm. right? Uh, don't worry about it. That's going to resolve itself. Because there's a guy. Uh, like people want to people wanna affect some change. Like if you could... Like if you can move something, if it's not of the Lord, there is a God and God's going to bring all things to light and all things to fruition. But the, but the real point I want to get to is that don't just assume that the unfruitful works of darkness, all right, that you can just ignore it. That's not how you compact that thing. It says, but rather reprove them. So if somebody's coming to you with some heresy. It's telling you, you need to correct them. And the Bible says, have no fellowship. That's the first step. Right. Because when you do have fellowship, like we read in Romans 16, commands us to be separate and cut them off. Guess what? You're going to get bit. That's why a lot of people are being bit with the virus. Right. But when you're a beta male simpleton, I'm going to repeat it again. Beta. <laughs> Some brothers got mad at me after my Thursday my Thursday uh, afternoon class. Next thing you know, I got pictures of my bank account online. I'll repeat it again. Maybe I thought I was going to go hide somewhere under the bed. When you're a beta male simpleton with no alpha male traits, this scripture is hard for you to do. Why? Because you're a man pleaser and you have to run behind the alpha male. That's why some of you, your houses are, are out of order. Some brothers, your wife done left you because she's seen my husband is a beta male simp. Let me go after the alpha male because my husband is not an alpha male. That's exactly it. Baby. God says to have no fellowship with them and to grow some cojones get some testicular <laughs> fortitude testicular to fortitude. what reprove them okay but when you have friendship you can't do that right right there's another scripture you know what i want to look for it real quick uh that talks about um how you deal with somebody that's coming to you with that stuff oh gosh it says something like uh uh, like the North Wind. Oh man, I can't let's see. This is the wrong page that I got here. Oh, here we go. Here it is. I'm gonna look it up. See, I don't. I don't. I'm. I'm not one of them precept brothers. It's not. It's not. I'm not good with that. North Wind. Uh. Okay. Here we go. Give me Proverbs 25 and 23. This. I don't have this written down, but I wanna. I wanna get. <coughs> And this pertains to you with that BS, then putting your, your information out there. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so go ahead, read that real quick. Proverbs 25, 23. The north wind driveth away rain, so doth an angry countenance a backbiting tongue. And I get this because I, I, there's the part in Ephesians where it talks about reproving them. All right. It says the north wind, 
right? And think of the characteristics of that, right? It's a strong wind. It pushes the clouds and the storms out so that the cloud can skew up. So you can get rid of all that noise and nonsense, all right? So that, that, that evil storm, that dark storm, right? The unfruitful works of darkness can be driven away. It tells you, you know what else will drive that away? Because, right, maybe people don't understand what a backbiting tongue is. It says an angry countenance, right? Mm -hmm. So it says backbiting is to attack the character or reputation of a person who is not present. So when you see things coming up and people trying to talk about so-and-so and -and this, different leaders that you know that you see their works and what they have put in and what they've stood for, all right? The scripture tells you, don't, don't entreat that person like a brother. Don't entreat them like a friend. This is what Romans 16 is, is getting into. Mm-hmm. It says an angry countenance. That means it, that's like the brother or sister that come to you. This is what I'm saying. It says uh, reprove them. Don't just receive something and sit there and be like, you know, oh, okay, brother. And you know, okay, sister. And then just walk away. Right? So if somebody's talking crap to you and you start looking at them with the meme mug, mm-hmm. you think they're going to keep doing that thing? Nope. No. And if they keep doing it, it's called contingency talk. There's something in you that they see. They see that beta male simpleton characteristic. They see that beta male simpleton virtue inside of you. So that's why they'll stand there and try to and try to spread heresy because they know you're not going to check them. Why? Because you probably ate lamb with that brother in your in your house. You probably had barbecue <laughs> with that brother in your house. You probably drank a few beers together. So he knows that you reverence your um your relationship instead of the um. Instead of the most high God. That's what it is. That's what it is. You got to understand that thing. Hey, somebody put, uh, happened to a friend. He introduced me to IUIC and then he lost it. Hey, I'm going to tell you something. What happened to me? The, the, the brother that, intro- I'm not, I'm not going to put anybody's thing out. The brother that introduced me out there is, is now separating himself from IUIC. All right. So, I mean, sit that and crunch on it. Same thing here. I mean, almost, hey, Bishop Nathaniel was telling me that, uh, the brother who taught him the truth done come out left left over uh, uh edomite woman he was telling me he, that actually yeah. he moved out in arizona to be with some better Edomite. it was a i think it was another kingdom brother he said he said he thinks it was simeon that first uh, made him aware of the truth all right and that the brother left so that's common you'll see that stuff and guess what that person's sole purpose their only goal was that it was to go ahead and be that that messenger mm-hmm. For, for 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 you to wake up, for you to move forward in that. You know, somebody wrote here too, man, something about brothers barking up the wrong tree. Um, I just want to say, listen, uh don't don't ever mistake that that these classes are for anybody specific, mm-hmm. all right, except for yourself, except for those of you listening that are working to obtain and strive. We might be triggered by something and a scripture will come into our mind mm-hmm. to deal with a situation, all right, but the class is for the edification of, of all you brothers and sisters, all right? Not to sit there and just, uh, uh, you know, complain about it. Because there's nothing edifying about that. People mm-hmm. putting out videos just talking crap about people, there's nothing edifying about that, all right? That's, that's backbiting. Because it says you're talking in, in a way, right? Let me read it again. Mm-hmm. It says, to attack the character or reputation of a person who is not present. Because mm-hmm. if you really got an issue with somebody like that, you go to their face and you tell them something like that. And sometimes that won't happen. You might live in the same state as the person. They know where to find you, but they won't do that. Instead, they'll run a Facebook and post bank accounts and take secret snapshots. Yeah, and I mean, that, so yeah, that, that's what that's that, wicked that, as hell. That, that, make no mistake about it. my class today is not about that, mm-hmm. but 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 it applies to that. It's the topic I'm going over includes stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Let me just put it that way. All right. Because a lot of times we look at this thing and we just think Christians that aren't in the Bible. No. This can apply to home. This can apply to the same house. And I'm talking about brothers and sisters, Israelites like yourselves that 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 were in this at one time. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's let's get let's get back on track here. So mm-hmm. uh, read Ephesians five eleven again. <clears throat> Ephesians five verse eleven. Have and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. And this is the point that you got to get, all right? We're trying to define what that separation really means, okay? It's real nuanced. And it says, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. So you want to know how you know that this isn't talking about have no fellowship with the sin? Mm -hmm. This is talking about people because you don't reprove sin. Mm -hmm. You don't don't say, oh, oh, lust spirit, the hell with you. Get off of me. Right. 
you know, don't go that way. The, 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 it says the fruitful works of darkness is dealing with those brothers and sisters that are not in this mindset, that are clearly not keeping the commandments as you have been instructed to. All right. Mm -hmm. Remember, we got to be defenders of this gospel, man. This is why he tells you, yo, reprove them. Don't entertain that stuff. This is what he means about be separate. You know, I got brothers and sisters here in Phoenix that probably haven't been around in three months, floating around like they still part of the body. Mm -hmm. I ain't remove them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, there's no need for them to be in certain groups and stuff like that, like internal chats and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But they in the brother's group, they might be in the sister's group, and they and they here perpetrating and acting like they still part of the body. Mm -hmm. Don't keep in touch with nobody. You know, brothers was looking for them. Always Stragons. an excuse. And, yeah. and hold on, this is another one, because I'm dealing with that in Dallas, too. If something's going on at home, they said, well, how come you never reached out to me? Right. When the scriptures tell you those that fear the Lord spake often, with each other All right listen let me tell the you the phone something. works both ways the phone works both ways and i'm gonna tell you something <clears throat> we will reach out and we do reach out and when we it, when, when, it's like tennis right i'm gonna hit the ball to you i'm gonna wait for you i can't play the game if you don't hit it back mm -hmm. if i tap the ball and i make the call or somebody because right, that's the other thing they expected me to come down and and and, and call you if you ain't answering a, a member or a soldier that's over you I'm supposed to, as the camp leader, come down and, and look for you? Mm -hmm. Who the hell are you? I already know what your mindset is in. If you don't got the respect for, for, for the junior brother and you waiting for the senior brother to call you, what type of spirit are you in? Mm. What type of bull? Guy? And then you never had the decency to tell me why you're separating yourself, and now I'm supposed to come search for you? I ain't going to do it. I'm too busy. My hand is to the plow for the Lord's work. I ain't got time to come off of what I'm doing and my focus to come and chase you behind down. So you got brothers that'll come and they expect you to, 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 to reach out to them in a way. Listen, you'll get a few phone calls. You'll get a few things reaching out. After that, we got to keep it moving, right? Hey, Christ didn't even want to let uh, uh, Peter bury his pops. Hmm. He said, bro, no, no, no. And it's not that he didn't want to bury his pops. Not that there's any sin in that. Hmm. They were on a mission. They had to go somewhere. You know what I'm saying? That you, you traveling by ship. Back in them days, think about the context of that thing. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not like, oh, I'll catch up with you. He said, let the dead bury the dead. But, yo, your pops is dead already. There's no chance for him to repent. What are you going to do and go mourn him for? Scripture does tell you to mourn and everything like that. The point was it was in the context of what they did and what they were focused on. Right? So I ain't going to stress a brother or sister like that. I ain't going to keep looking for you. But then you want to run around acting like you. Listen, and then you got brothers and sisters that will still deal and talk to those brothers and sisters and never once talking about, yo, why ain't you at the Sabbath? Why ain't you at the feast days? Where you been? And then you fall for the okie doke of an stupid excuse about work or mm. I'm too busy or whatever. Listen, the commandments say keep the Sabbath, all right? <clears throat> Everybody's looking for absolution from, from keeping a law, right? And they'll come up to you and be like, hey, you know, I got no choice but to work on the Sabbath. Listen, seek your own salvation with fear and trembling. I can't give you, I can't give you license to sin, right? A lot of times we talk about captivity, <laughs> whatever. What we're talking about is that we're not going to chastise you mm -hmm. if you got to work. But we can't absolve you from whatever God's judge. That's between you and the Lord. Mm -hmm. So if you're in a situation where you got to do something like that and you got to break a Sabbath or whatever, me telling you it's okay, first of all, I won't ever do that. All right? I think people mistake that when we say, oh, it's captivity. Everybody says, oh, captivity, I can't make it today. Mm -hmm. You know what's crazy, Cap? When brothers or sisters will say, yeah, it's between uh, me and the Lord, they make it, it's just... I don't know. That statement, I don't know, could never come out of my mouth. Why? Because of the, the fear. You don't want it to be between you and the Lord. That's why the Most High will send messengers to intervene. Right. Because when it be, when it gets down to you and the Lord, there's some serious, serious, serious hey, consequences. That's what tells you about that. He says you. Uh, it says you rather fear uh, you. You ought to fear God rather than men. Mm -hmm. And he says why? He goes because God could break down to the asunder to your soul. Mm -hmm. That's that's the power that's in charge of your soul. Yeah. That's that's that spirit that once that's destroyed, there's nothing. Death is just the death of this, your, your current, you know, regeneration. Mm -hmm. but, but once you get into the most high's hands, you know, it's, it's a terrible thing to fall into the hands of the Lord. It's a terrible thing to fall into the hands of the Lord. And y'all don't want that thing. So that's, it amazes me how people come to you and they're looking for absolution from you as a leader to do something. Listen, I'm going to give you advice. I'm going to tell you what it is. And I'm going to tell you what the scripture says. And then you got to make your decision. What I'm not going to do because mm -hmm. I understand captivity, <clears throat> all right, is continue to give you grief over it unless i see that there's not an effort being made to, to resolve that situation mm -hmm. you know but it, it amazes me how that stuff comes out but anyway mm -hmm. let's get back on let me go back to the second peter just remember the point is you have to reprove these things all right you got to reprove these people 
that are bringing forth unfruitful works of darkness. All right. Second Peter one. And let's read verse five now. Second Peter chapter one and verse five. <clears throat> and beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge. Now, now, first thing we were dealing with was godliness, right? And godliness is conforming to the laws and wishes of the most high God. And we went through some steps for that. When you read verse four, it's talking to you about uh, um, uh, don't be partaker, be partakers of divine nature and that we, we have to escape the corruption that's in the world through lust, right? So now Peter says, and besides all this that I just told you, besides all this that we just brought out for you in the scriptures, he says, you must give all diligence. Add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge. So he's <clears throat> this is a recipe that is brewing. All right. It, this to me, I read this, you know, like I've been working on my cooking game a little bit. You mm -hmm. know, I'm a city boy. Mm -hmm. So, you know, from, from the Bronx. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. so you know, I, I mean, I, I'm not on the level of some of these other brothers, you know, mm -hmm. these Texas barbecue brothers and stuff like that. But, you know, I've been doing my things. I've been known to cook a good brisket. <laughs> All right. And I read recipes. So when I read this stuff, I say, damn, okay, now I got to add this. Now I have to add that. And when you read a recipe, a lot of times you don't just add it. You have to add it a certain way. You have to, you know, they'll tell you, uh, uh, spread it, rub it, right? You know, uh, uh, mix it, all right? Take this ingredient and mix it with that. Peter here, remember when we spoke in the beginning, he said all things are given unto us on how to deal with this stuff, right? How to obtain those promises that the Most High spoke about. And then now as we went through those steps in godliness, he says, listen, and besides this stuff, there's a little more. And besides this, you must give all Diligence, all right? Diligence is that consistency. This is what I was talking about earlier that you come into this thing and you, and I said, you can be an active participant. You can be, you know what I mean? Like, you know, come in every Sabbath, you mm -hmm. go to every meeting, you're at every feast day, you come to the gatherings and stuff, but you're not walking circumspect. You're not walking considering that you, you need to have your spiritual armor on at all times. We, we, let, we let the guard down. We, we get comfortable and complacent in this walk. And then that's when heresies creep in. That's when other doctrines creep in. That's when the lust of other things starts to creep in because you're not on guard. All right. You're not walking circumspectly. Cautiously is what circumspect means. Mm -hmm. So he says you must add diligence. And that's the thing that you see a lot. Inconsistent brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Inconsistent. And actually, that's that's a misnomer because. You're always consistent. It's whether you're consistent in the Lord's work or you're consistent in your lust. You're consistent in the work of the world, mm -hmm. right? You're going to do one or the other. You can't so, serve two masters. No. So what I'm going to say, it, it, you, you could be consistent in something else, all right? And the preponderance needs to be on this walk, right? So you always, so inconsistent is, is like I said, it, it's a simple way to put the word out there, but it's actually a misnomer. It's not, it's not really the right thing. We're all consistent in something, mm -hmm. right? Right? Um, so it says, and that diligence, and then it says, add virtue, right? So I, I want to look at the definition of virtue. <clears throat> definition of virtue. <clears throat> and virtue says moral excellence, goodness, righteousness. And here's that word again, conformity of one's life and conduct to moral and ethical principle, principles. Okay. Moral, it says excellence. Potency. I love these definitions for virtue. Uh, valor. Hey, that's a good one. Now mm -hmm. we got that men of valor program. Mm -hmm. Brothers think it's just exercise and stuff like mm -hmm. that. No, that says that's virtue. Virtue is like a devotion. See, there's another word, chastity, virginity, right? Mm -hmm. Virtue is like a devotion, all right? So it says, add to this diligence, add to keeping these commandments, devotion, virtue. All right. Like, just like the scripture talks about, as it was your way to go astray from the Lord, mm -hmm. seek him 10 times more. That's virtue. Many of you, uh, listen, I, I, I might be guilty of it sometimes. Seeking him 10 times more than, than the way I saw sin. I, and, and, but, and I'll give you, I'll get, I'll paint a picture for you. Mm -hmm. Hanging out. And if I didn't catch a number or hook up with a girl, the night wasn't good. Mm -hmm. And I was dedicated to that. Every weekend was to go out to look to who among her, mm -hmm. to who among her, to fornicate. Every weekend was, that was the goal. Why did I hang out? I didn't hang out to kick it with the brothers. I hung out with the brothers to try to find women, mm -hmm. right? And I'm, and I'm using nice terms, all right? Because Connolly, we used to, you know, hoes, whatever, we used to say all that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. I'm using nice terms, okay? 
uh, that same conviction you had for that, some of y'all was drinking. I was never a real big drinker. Some of y'all was drinking Thursday to, to Sunday because so, you go to Sunday brunch mm -hmm. and you're still drinking. Could have wait for Thursday to happen, that because right, that's when everything happened. Or sometimes it was every day. I remember I used to work in in uh, uh um I used to work in a stockbroker's office, and happy hour every day after work, drinking the miseries of it. Y'all need to seek the Lord. It says ten times more in that. That's virtue. All right, that same zeal that you had for whatever it is that that, that you love uh, worldly, you need to have that in addition to keeping the commandments. Remember what we talk about. Peter here said. Uh, all things are given to you to obtain those promises, and it's not just the keeping of the commandment. Remember, we went into the curses because it says you didn't do it with joyfulness and gladness of heart, and that's where that virtue piece comes in. You can't just you can't just kind of uh, grudgingly, right? In the beginning, maybe you do some things because of that. The scripture says add virtue to it. So now, get me uh, actually read Second Peter one five again. Second Peter one verse five, and beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue. And to virtue, knowledge. He's being redundant here again, right? Give me knowledge in Malachi uh, 2 and 7, all right? And Proverbs 1 and 7. He says, add to the virtue, knowledge. They go hand in hand, right? So it's like uh, when you're baking something. Let's say you're baking bread. You can put all the ingredients in there, but if you don't add the yeast, it's not going to rise, right? You got to add the yeast for it to do what it do. It's the same thing with these scriptures. You could be keeping all those commandments, put all those ingredients into play, right? But if you don't add this other element, it's not going to come out the way you need it to be added, right? So just to reemphasize, knowledge, Malachi 2 and 7. This is why I go to the table. Okay, I got it. Malachi <laughs> chapter 2, verse 7. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth. Deep basics, brothers and sisters. This is deep basics. That's the other thing that happens. You know, a lot of times, I think some of us as leaders take for granted that we got young brothers and sisters in this, as far as in this walk, right? Early in their repentance. And, and I think sometimes we forget that, you know, to give them this basic medicine to, to get them up to where they need to be. This is something that's just very fundamental, all right? He says, and knowledge. Because if you don't fill these gaps in, People are going to fill it in with carnal stuff. And they're going to say, oh, well, knowledge is this. And, you know, it's it's the knowledge of love and hugs and kisses and all this stuff. No, it's still going back to the law, all right? But the virtue is that diligence, that moral excellence in doing so, right? So he says, for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. It says, seek the law at his mouth. Give me Proverbs 1 and 7. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And listen, that it... That to me, that's your last. If that's the beginning of knowledge, that's also the last layer of safety that you have when you start to go off. All right. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge because that's what drives you to keep these commandments. That's what makes you stay in these. That's what makes you really think to apply in every aspect of what you're doing. Right. Uh, I, I was making a joke maybe a couple years ago when I first got out here. You know, Christians will put the vibe out and they'll say, uh, uh, and I mean, when I say Christians, I mean Christianity. And they say, what would Jesus do? But with the proper understanding of Christ, that's actually a good mindset to have. What would Jesus do, mm -hmm. right? The fear is the beginning of knowledge, mm -hmm. right? And then it says, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. That's how you know it's talking about putting yourself in that frame of mind to always self-assess and check where you at, all right? And when you're receiving something from a brother or sister, is it of God? You know what it is? Our people love to run to gossip and cheat. Yo, how many times you 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 hear like a commotion and you want to run and see what's going on, mm -hmm. right? Instinctively, right? What do you do when you hear like screeching <clears throat> wheels? Oh, mm -hmm. right? And you want to look right away. Mm -hmm. But hey, you, you know what the term rubbernecking means, right? When you're in traffic and there's an accident that's on the side of the road and everybody's slowing down because they're doing this. Mm -hmm. I hate that. That's what they call it, rubbernecking. That's where the term comes from because you got a rubberneck all of a sudden and you're looking. And it, all the lanes are open, but it's because you stop it to be nosy, all right, that that's what it, that's what it puts you in the frame of mind to do. Because you stop it to be nosy, you're like, oh, 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 and you're looking that way, all right? You have to have that fear and you have to put yourself in that frame of mind to accept the wisdom and the instruction that's there, right? If everybody, it's like you, you run to something and you don't measure it against these scriptures. And it's because you're not fearful of the Lord, all right? Uh, let's go where, where we go to Second Peter's 1 again. Like I said, we're going to keep going back and forth there. Mm -hmm. 
and let's read verse 6 now. Second Peter 1 and 6. Mm -hmm. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 6. And to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness. Again, these are the steps. All right. These things, they they come of virtue. Right. And I think, you know, when I had did this I, again, I'm looking up definitions. I want to look up temperance. All right. Because we understand what patience is. And then temperance is moderation or self-restraint in action. This is why I say that fear. A lot of times it comes from that point of restraining yourself. So temperance and patience aren't the same things. Right. People, I think mm -hmm. they, they try to break words down and they say, well, oh, temper or temperance. That means being no temperance means self-restraint in action, mm -hmm. self-control. The scripture says mm -hmm. habitual moderation in the indulgence of natural appetite or passion, especially in the use of alcoholic liquors. All right. It says you must practice abstinence from these things. Look, total mm -hmm. abstinence from alcoholic liquors. So what Peter is telling you here. Is that in addition to this godliness that starts with conforming to what God wants, you must add this virtue, right? Which is a moral excellence, all right? This is the magnificence of virtue. Virtue is, shouldn't be taken lightly, all right, when it talks about virtue, okay? And then it says in that, add temperance, restraint, okay? Self-restraint, self-control, mm -hmm. abstinence from what? From sin, from the things that the Lord don't want you to do, and have patience in this walk, whether it's in... Maybe you don't understand something right away. Maybe maybe some of you brothers are, are confused when you have different people speaking out against us and things like that. It says, practice that self-restraint. Don't do nothing. Mm -hmm. And just let the Lord reveal. You will start to see it. When it first happened, everybody was losing their mind. And we said, watch, other doctrines will come soon. Mm -hmm. And what came? Other, other doctrines. doctrines. Yep. Yep. Now that temperance is discipline. Right. You, you that's self-discipline. Yes. You have to control your urges. That's an that's a, that's a, that's a excellent way to put it, right? The scripture also tells you in Wisdom of Solomon, mm -hmm. it says the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit, meaning the deceit within yourself. It, it can't reside in, 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 a, in a body, in a spirit that's conflicted. You, you, you have to be tempered in your resolve, meaning you got to be able to self-control. You got to be able to have that discipline. To, to discipline yourself from your own lust, from your own things that desire you. And don't and don't fool yourself. You know, I, I think I can't remember where, but it, it was had to do with sales or something. But uh it deals with the impulses that we have when we're shopping. And it says uh we tend to buy impulsively and do things impulsively and then rationalize with logic mm. rather than look at it the right way. And the logic really when we're speaking about our spirit should come from the scriptures. So a lot of times what we do is we're emotional. Right, and we make the decisions and stuff emotional. Yes, wisdom of Solomon one and five. Uh, we make it emotional, mm -hmm. and then we try to justify it. And this is why you have somebody say, "Well, I'm not keeping the Sabbath because of this, and I'm not doing that because of that, mm -hmm. this, that, and the other." Right? Um, go ahead, read on, because I want to. I want to start. Um, actually, yeah, read, I want to read to eight. Go ahead, verse seven. And to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness. Charity. And we understand what charity is, all right? Loving your neighbor as yourself. And brotherly kindness, you know what that is? Taking consideration even. If a brother or sister come to you and they see something in you, don't just shut them down right away. You have to consider that the brother and sister did see something. So I'm talking about an offense or something. Maybe somebody comes to you and be like, hey, you know, uh, uh, you, know you, you were like this with me or you said this this way, even if it's not true. And I'm not talking about somebody who's doing that stuff all the time. Then you got to rebuke that type of spirit, right? But if somebody comes to you, Brotherly kindness has many levels to it too. And you gotta you got to consider that a brother or sister is, is is approaching you and saying that they feel a way or whatever it is, right? And then try to apply the scriptures in that situation. Read on. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So he says, if these things be in you and not just in you. But abound. Something abound means that it's abundant, right? And everybody can see it. That goes back to that 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 light so uh, shiny, right? That soul to the earth. He goes, if all these steps that I've given to you, right, from verse 3 all the way down to verse 7 are in you and abound in you, he says, you will not be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. So you just got the recipe on how you increase your knowledge, all right? He says, 
they only not only does it have to be in you now the application of it it has to be abound in you right get me wisdom of solomon eight and five wisdom eight and five we started a little late so we might i hope i don't come up against another brother's class i don't know if there's another slot that starts okay i think 10 a.m is their slot right it's 7 20 here Wisdom of, Solomon, right? Wisdom of Solomon 8, and I want verse 5. <clears throat> Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 8 and verse 5. If riches be a possession to be desired in this life. And aren't riches to be possession to be desired? I remember what, when the lotto was like 1.5 billion. Oh, yeah. Everybody was losing their mind over that. I go front. I played. Mm -hmm, All right. So you know what I'm saying? I didn't play a lot. I play like a dollar because I figure if the Lord gonna give it to me, He gonna give it to me on a dollar. Mm -hmm. I don't need to pay twenty, mm -hmm. right? If I fully, if I fully have faith in the Lord, I mean, it was not a dollar. I pay one ticket. I think it's like two dollars mm -hmm. for, for that thing. But I play one ticket, and in my mind, I'm thinking of all the wonderful things I'm gonna do for the body and stuff. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, Nah, I ain't gonna give it to you. And I just like to believe because He thinks I'll go to hell off. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> that's why He ain't giving it to me. All right. I'm not saying you'll never see somebody in Israel win the lotto, mm -hmm. but watch, watch when that happens. All right. Mm -hmm. So, but riches is a thing to be desired, right? So it says, if riches are a thing to be desired, right? Go ahead. If riches be a possession to be desired in this life, what is richer than wisdom that worketh all things? It says, wisdom worketh all things. This is why Solomon knew to ask for that above all things, right? Because he says, there's nothing richer than that. Okay. Read on. And if prudence work, who of all that are is a more cunning workman than she? He says, and if prudence work, who of all that is a more cunning workman than prudence? Go ahead. And if a man love righteousness, her labors are virtues, but she teacheth temperance and prudence, justice and fortitude, which are such things as men can have nothing more profitable in their life. This is the magnificence of virtue. All right. That's the word I used to like the word magnificent, bro. Just it's powerful mm -hmm. the magnificent don't don't take virtue lightly when it's put in there under virtue comes all these things the scripture tells you it says if a man love righteousness if that first love of keeping these laws that devotion to it all right it says then the labors are virtues so it shows forth right that's what comes out of that it says for she teacheth virtue will teach you temperance and it'll teach you prudence all right. And prudence is what? Being able to uh, uh, have a sober mind, essentially. I'm going to give you the shorthand version of it. Right. And I'm going to be prudent in the decisions that I make. I'm not going to be hasty in this and hasty in that. All the while applying these things. So this is what's beautiful about virtue is that it'll teach you these other things. All right. That virtue, that moral excellence, right, because it's striving for excellence in it, not halfway. <laughs> It's going to teach you the rest of these things. And it says justice and fortitude, which are such things as men can never have nothing. More. There's nothing more. Listen, that $1.5 billion, whatever that lotto was, not as profitable as having these spirits in you, having these characteristics in you. And make no mistake, these are spirits, all right? Mm -hmm. Just like pride is a spirit, just like sexual lust, the spirit to lie is a spirit, but these are righteous spirits. These are spirits that they say is more profitable for you, all right? Um, that's all I wanted on that. That's the importance of virtue, okay? Uh, give me wisdom five and six. Stay in wisdom. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter five and verse six. Therefore, have we, er have we erred from the way of the truth and the light of righteousness hath not shined unto us and the sun of righteousness rose not upon us? We wearied ourselves in the way of wickedness and destruction. We wearied ourselves. When you were in the world, it says you exhaust. That's what I was talking about earlier. Like uh, for me, every, every weekend had to be about trying to hook up, right? Some of y'all, it was drinking. Some of y'all, it was drugs. Some, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all, y'all addicted to work. Y'all love your damn job too much, mm -hmm. right? And I'm not saying be like the hell with it. You need to be an excellent example. You should be the, you should be the best employee at your company. To, to, to take away the stereotypes, to take away uh, 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 the misnomers of, of what we are, no good and stuff like that. You should be the best employee at your company. But it says we worried ourselves in the way of wickedness and destruction. Go ahead. Yea, we have gone through deserts. 
where they lay no way. And you worried yourself in that stuff, and it's a desert. There was there's nothing in the world for you. It's death. It's the valley of the shadow of death. Go ahead. Where there lay no way, but as for the way of the Lord, we have not known. We have not known those things. I don't care if you were in a different religion, different denomination, whatever it might be. We did not know those things. What you worried yourself in was a desert where there was no living water. There was nothing to eat, nothing to sustain you. And this is why it says you were worried. All right, read on. What hath pride profited us? Or what good hath riches with our vaunting brought us? None of that stuff. Pride don't profit you. Pride in, the, pride in the right things, in the scripture, in the most high, that's a good pride. That's a righteous pride. But it says, your carnal pride, your worldly pride, what have that profited you? What good have riches with our vaunting brought us? Right? Status. Let me flaunt my stuff. Right? Go ahead. All those things are passed away like a shadow. And as a post that had that pasted by that it's it's not fully tangible you know how a shadow just kind of passes by right depending on the angle of the light or whatever it disappears it says all that stuff man all that carnal stuff that have passed away go ahead and as a ship that passeth over the waves of the water which when it is gone by the trace thereof cannot be found neither the pathway of the keel in the way so you know like when you see like a boat pass by and stuff like that the wake that it leaves behind it it says once that wake settles and it's gone by there's nothing there's no tire tracks right i mean it's a boat obviously there's no tire track there's nothing there's no there's no tread there's nothing you will never know that a ship passed by there without this truth without this walk without that fulfillment of everything we read in second peters that's what your life is like you're not leaving no mark you're not leaving no legacy there's no purpose in your life. I often tell brothers and sisters, man, carnally in a worldly sense, this is very, this is very intimately personal for me when I read things like this because, you know, for me, from a, from a worldly perspective, you know, at the age of 28, I bought my house. I was a vice president at a bank. I, 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 was, dri I was driving my dream car. I was living the dream. I had whatever I wanted. Nobody could buy me a gift because I bought it for myself already. I had what I wanted, right? It's making good money. And I was empty. I was depressed. I didn't know what was going on. And I, and, and, I, and I languished on like that for a few years until this word came to me. And I was filled with purpose. I do what I do because I, 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 it, I feel it in me. And I was filled with a sense of purpose. There's nothing stronger than having a sense of purpose in something. Mm -hmm. That thing will put you in a mind like, no matter what. You're not tired, whatever it is. Excuses go away. You have a sense of purpose a reason to move forward and take another step and wake up every day, that thing will change your world. And, and brothers and sisters, purpose is not another person. Purpose is not your kids. All right. True purpose, purpose that doesn't ever wane or lose its energy comes from these scriptures. All right. Understand that because I thought my purpose was to attain stuff. And when I have attained everything that I wanted, I was empty. And I'm not saying I was rich. All right. And, you know, listen, I grew up in the projects. I was on food stamps and on welfare, all right? I had hand-me-downs. We ate, like, potatoes and eggs, maybe just rice with corn. You know, like, like I went through it. So I, I think some people who don't know my, my story, they think, like, the, 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 because I have a mind for business and things like that now, but mm -hmm. this is who know me, mm -hmm. that I never went through anything. No, it's because I went through something mm -hmm. that I'm able to, 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 to go through that. You know what I'm saying? And, and have appreciation for that. But the point that I'm making is that you got to be filled with the purpose of the scriptures because it's telling you anything in the world is, is emptiness. All right. It, 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 it's there's nothing there. Don't get me wrong. I like nice things. I like to have nice things. Right. From a carnal perspective. And there's no sin in that. So long as, you know, where your mind is, where your heart is. All right. That's where your treasure is. And my heart's on these scriptures. My heart's on doing this thing. Right. For my salvation and for our nation and being that light. You mm -hmm. got something you want to say? No, no. Go, okay, go ahead. Read on. <clears throat> Verse 11. Or as when a bird hath flown through the air, there is no token of her way to be found. You can't see the tracks. Oh, yeah, bird. You won't go out and look up in the sky and say a bird flew through here, right? No, you can't look up in the sky and see that. Go ahead. But the light air being beaten with the stroke of her wings and parted with the violent noise and motion of them is passed through. And therein afterwards, no sign where she went is to be found. Solomon is, I mean, this is so deep for the sake of time. I, I, I'm not going to, you know, we're going to keep reading now because I want to get to uh, verse 16. But 
all it is is he's very particular in what he's using here. So when he talks about the violentness and everything, he's talking about that carnal life, right? And there's a lot of elements to that. But the point is that you don't see anything, right? You, there's no trace of this. It's all unprofitable, right? Go ahead, read. Or like as when an arrow is shot at a mark, it parteth the air, which immediately cometh together again, so that a man cannot know where it went through. Right, so you ever see like an illustration of an arrow flying through the air and you see the, the air coming over the top part and the bottom part of it? It says, listen, once that thing passes through, the air closes right behind it. It cuts through the air and then it closes behind it. You never knew that an arrow was shot through there. Go ahead. Even so, we in like manner, as soon as we were born, began to draw to our end. That without these commandments, without this godliness and this virtue, that's what your life is. Y'all thought you're leaving a mark? You thought you're leaving a legacy? Your legacy resides in these scriptures and what you're doing there. Anything worldly carnal, he says, likewise, to all these things I just said, from the day you're born, you start to die and nothing is left behind you. You're not leaving any legacy, go ahead. And had no sign of virtue to show. And no sign of virtue to show. Virtue is what leaves a mark, go ahead. But we're consumed in our own wickedness. Consumed, consumed in our wickedness. That's how, that's how precarious it is, man. And you don't think that stuff, as destructive as it was, as, as surrounded by it, as we would knee deep in it, neck deep, that that stuff can't come back, can't creep in. Go ahead, read. For the hope of the ungodly is like dust that is blown away with the wind, like a thin froth that is driven away with the storm, like as the smoke which is dispersed here and there with the tempest and passeth away as the remembrance of a guest that tarrieth but a day. Hey, let me tell you something. <laughs> like I said, so, uh, I, 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 for me, these classes ain't gonna be about any particular brother or sister, but mm -hmm. sometimes, bro, is elements are gonna come up. Mm -hmm. People gonna be forgotten, man. You ain't about this virtue. You ain't about this godliness. You ain't about doing what God want. It says that it's just gonna, listen, the hope of the ungodly is gonna be like that dust that blows away, like a thin froth that's driven with the storm, like smoke that's dispersed. It said, and it passeth away as the remembrance of a guest that tarrieth but a day. Mm -hmm. So it's like you have somebody that come over and they, you know, they came by to maybe borrow sugar or something like that. And you don't even remember wh when they were there, that they were just there for like a moment. There's no mark to be left by a brother or sister that way. If it's not of the Lord, if it's not rooted in that virtue and that godliness, and all those steps are mixed in there with that, it says it's going to pass away. <clears throat> Nobody's going to remember you. Nobody. And most of all, the most high won't. That's what you have to understand, the, 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 um, the audience here, all right? We do everything unto the Lord. And he's not just talking about in the world and the mark you're going to leave in the world. But he's talking about the mark you're going to leave with the Lord. You're not going to be in that book. That book, you know, go ahead, read. But the righteous live forevermore. Their reward also is with the Lord. And the care of them is with the most high. Yeah, so I'm not talking on my behind when I break down 415 like I'm saying. He says, but understand the righteous are going to live forevermore. And our reward is with the Lord. We don't do things to seek. For, for approval of men to gather followers onto us mm -hmm. so 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 that our business can thrive again. Mm -hmm. Ungodly gain. Ungodly gain. Go ahead. Therefore shall they receive a glorious kingdom and a beautiful crown from the Lord's hand. For with his right hand shall he cover them, and with his arm shall he protect them. And that's what we should all subscribe to. We want that, that protection. Listen, if God is for us, nobody could be against us. So your fear and motivation should be to have the most high for you, for him to have your back. Uh, we almost done, kind of. Uh, let me get Romans 12 and 2, all right? Remember, the God godliness and virtue. A lot of words are coming out, but I want you to remember those two. You remember those two, you're going to be all right in what they mean, okay? Romans 12 verse 2. Romans 12 verse 2, because godliness, again, I will remind you, the definition is conforming to the laws and wishes of God. Think, th th think it ain't true? Listen to this scripture. Romans 12 verse 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It says be not conformed to this world. Godliness is being conformed, right? I read the definition, conforming to the laws and wishes of God. So it says, don't be conformed to this world, but what we should be conformed to is the laws and wishes of God. Go ahead. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. 
If you are conformed to the most highest program, you won't fall for heresies. You won't fall for forced doctrines. Mm -hmm. You won't be pulled away by your lust, by a family member, by your kids, whatever it is that you set up and put above the most high, mm -hmm. be, uh, because we had lamb, because we were friends, mm -hmm. you will be able to prove and smell. You know what? It's, it's a BS detector. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to smell it a mile away. Smell right. the doodle. -doo. You'll smell the doodle -doo a mile away. And that goes for everything. That goes for everything because you're not conformed to this world. All right. So what comes from that? Give me Psalms 111 and 10. We'll move a little quicker through these and we should almost be ready to wrap up. We got one, two, three, four, five, uh, like seven scriptures, but still. Psalms 111. I'm going to tell you something. People who know me here in my region, in the Phoenix camp, and you know, the camps out here in the West. That's my line, bro. Psalms 111 and 10, that's the deepest scripture in the Bible. To me, that's the foundation to everything. That was one of my driving forces in, in, in my early repentance in this, right? Because I'm still repenting. That's another mm -hmm. thing I like to talk about. You're not repented. Anybody who says that, I, uh, for me, that's you're fooling yourself. Mm -hmm. Repentance is a continual thing. That's why, that's why you got to strive. That's why Paul says you're running a race, right, to obtain. Yeah, we haven't obtained anything yet. You got to die in this, all right? Or, or, or until Christ return, mm -hmm. you got to keep moving in this thing, right? And um, Psalms 111 and 10 for me, if, if, if ever I'm feeling doubtful, if ever I'm feeling tempted by anything sin, I, I remind myself of this scripture. Go ahead. Psalms 111 verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And I try to put myself in that fear. If all else fails, I put myself in that fear. So I got put. So it's it's like a hard reset for me, right? Go ahead. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. The fear happens first. That's the beginning, and then in time, as you continue to keep the laws, this will all make sense to you. This is how you can come up with something that somebody can't see it. This is how you can, brother, what it really belies it at the, at the end of it, mm -hmm. how brothers and sisters will leave after a heresy of, of, of how you celebrate the Sabbath day, all right, is that you're, there's sin somewhere in the midst. Of course. Because, and, and, because the good understanding comes from keeping the commandments. Yeah, and a, a lot of times when we say sin, brothers and sisters, your first thought is sleeping with another man's wife, right. uh, idolatry, uh, and other stuff. Sin could just be that 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 uh that bitterness that you allow to spring up inside of yourself, that hate, that malice, that envy, that evil surmising thought that you have of a brother. You never settled the, the, the quarrel that you have between between brothers. Never applied Matthew 18. So now that bitterness rose up. So now everything that you learned from this particular group or this particular brother now is of the devil. Not because they're off, but because of that hate that you have inside. For them, right, right. That root of business, that root of bitterness, is crazy, man. I did, a, I did a class dealing with that a little bit too. Uh, let me get Sirach one, mm -hmm. and let's start at one. And you can hear, you can see, you can hear it in their speech. You can hear it in their speech. All right, Sirach one and what? One and one. One and one. All wisdom cometh from the Lord and is with him forever. You got to understand that. And, and I mean, really try to reflect and embrace that. All wisdom cometh from the Lord and is with him forever. Read. Who can number the sand of the sea and the drops of rain and the days of eternity? The answer is no one. All right. It's a rhetorical question. Only the most high can. Go ahead. Who can find out the height of heaven and the breadth of the earth and the deep? and wisdom go ahead wisdom hath been created before all things and the understanding of prudence from everlasting remember peter said you got to add to these other things virtue and all this other stuff but he also said prudence has to be part of this and it's telling you that wisdom was created before all things but the understanding of prudence was there from the beginning it's an old spirit an old righteous spirit prudence read on the word of god most high is the fountain of wisdom and her ways are everlasting commandments. So now I want to look up the definition of prudence real quick, right? And prudence says, uh, caution with regard to practical matters, discretion, right? 
And then, being wise in practical affairs, it also says, from the root word prudent, wise or judicious. And practical affairs mean your everyday basic stuff. And then this is my favorite. So it also says sagacious. Sagacious. I always mess it up. Sagacious. And it says having or showing acute mental discernment and keen practical sense. Mm. You ever heard the term common sense ain't common? Mm -hmm. It's not. Common sense, prudence, is a spiritual gift that was there from the beginning with wisdom. All right? Uh, let that resonate for a second so you can understand that sagacity, which is acute mental discernment, to be able mm. to receive something and see what's behind it, to be able to sift. Remember, that's that BS detector that I'm talking mm -hmm. about. We don't have that naturally. That is a spiritual gift that comes from what? Having first and foremost godliness, that fear of the Lord, all right? Conforming to what God wants. And then these other gifts come to you. Do you know how powerful it is? I have brother come up to me. Uh, every now and then brothers will come up to me and they'll say to me, um, how do you read spirits? Mm -hmm. Like if it's a superpower that I activate, mm -hmm. like I, you know, uh, activate spirit reader. You know what? I'm not even going to say that I can read spirits, but I know through the application of the law, based on what the scripture tells me, that, that I have a level of prudence. I'm not going to say complete, right? Because I'm still working on myself. I have a level of prudence. I have a level of wisdom. I have a level of godliness. There's levels. There's levels to everything. Mm -hmm. I have, I, I, like the scripture says, you know, everybody's given the portion that's given to them, right? I have levels and everything. I told him, I said, bro, just be fearful and continue to keep the, man, the commandments, man. And the most high going to reveal stuff to you. And you'll be able to look at something as there's, there's, you shouldn't be confused. This is what the scripture tells you. The natural man don't understand things, mm -hmm. right? But the spiritual man will understand all things. This is why he can judge all things. And discern between good and evil. Right, right. Can exactly. I bring out a quick scripture? Go ahead, brother. Because the definition of sa sa sagacious. 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 Did I say that right? Sagacious. sagacious. Okay. I love that definition. I love it. Having or showing acute mental discernment and keen practical sense. Shrewd. When when we just read that definition, this scripture popped in mind. Hebrews 5.14. It says, but strong meat belongs mm. to them that are full nah, age, share, bro. even those who by reason of use, having their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. When you have a, when you're blessed with that virtue of being sagacious, you'll be able to smell the doodle. -doo, okay, smell the doodle -doo in the midst. Smell the heresy. Smell the lies. Smell the BS. Okay, but if you yourself are full of sh, you won't be able to smell nothing. Okay, whatever you smell and you think is a good smell, when it's the smell of death. All right, that's what the Bible's talking about. All praises, all praises. Let's go back to Sirach real quick. We're almost done. I want to try to read through these last few pretty quickly. I mean, it's a few scriptures, but it's a lot of verses. Sirach what? Uh, Sirach 1. Uh-huh. Right? And uh, start at 6. Sirach 1 and verse 6. To whom hath the root of wisdom been revealed? Or who hath known her wise counsels? Unto whom hath the knowledge of wisdom been made manifest? And who hath understood her great experience? There is one wise and greatly to be feared. The Lord sitting upon his throne. You see the continual elements. You know, Bishop Kanan has always taught me, you got to understand something. You get to a point where the Bible is a very intimidating book when you first come into this, right? Oh, it's so big, so many pages. You're confused because it's been brought to you in a way that's part and parcel, rudimentally, right? Not the full understanding. And when you start to get to understanding, it doesn't feel as intimidating, right? It, it, it's, it's, it's a comfort, right? That's what scripture tells you. It's that comforting spirit that comes from that. And you start to understand that there's a redundancy to the Bible. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much saying the same thing through the whole Bible, but in different ways. And you see these different elements that pop up that are fundamental. This is why I say it's deep bases that are fundamentals. Everybody always wants deep meat, deep chunks of stuff and things mm -hmm. like that. Man, I always tell brothers and sisters, uh, Psalms 111 and 10, start with that and then focus on that. Things like fear, things like godliness, things like prudence. And with that will come the understanding where you can take the meat off the bone when you see a verse and when you see a scripture. You, you, you transcend from memorizing precepts and what we're teaching you, and you actually start to comprehend it for yourself. Mm -hmm. Right? Go ahead. And that it. only comes with application of the laws. That's it. Following instructions, 
and wisdom. All right. 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 That's that godliness conforming mm -hmm. to God's laws. Right. Go ahead. Read. He created her and saw her and numbered her and poured her out upon all his works. She is with all flesh according to his gift. And he hath given her to them that love and him. And we understand that we love him by application. So this is what Isaac just said. All these things come with what? Applying the commandments first, right? Go ahead, read. The fear of the Lord is honor and glory and gladness and a crown of rejoicing. Because we grow up thinking that fear is a bad thing, right? And yeah, we know the Lord did not give us the spirit of fear when it comes to carnal type of things. We should not be fearful of those things. But the fear of the Lord is honorable. It's glorious. It makes you glad. I am glad that I fear the Lord because it keeps me straight and protected. Like we read earlier mm -hmm. in wisdom, that's how you know you got the Lord on your side. All right. It says, uh, where were we? Verse 11. And it's a crown of rejoicing. I had lacked purpose. Many of us had lacked purpose. So this truth came to us. Read. The fear of the Lord maketh a merry heart and giveth joy and gladness and a long life. It sounds like an oxymoron. How do you have fear and happiness? How do you have fear and joy? When it comes to the Lord, when it comes to fear and that, it comes behind that. Go ahead, read. Whoso feareth the Lord, it shall go well with him at the last, and he shall find favor in the day of his death. Don't, this is why I say the fear is the foundation, man. All this walk is built on fearing God more than men, more than anything else. And some of you, you're more concerned with what men think. This is why you don't reprove the unfruitful works of darkness. Mm -hmm. This is why you entertain stuff. And entertaining it is receiving it and not saying anything about it. Mm -hmm. Entertaining it is, is talking about not applying that Romans 16. There's a reason that that stuff is in there. Receiving it and letting that doubt creep into your mind. Having that evil suspicion, it says the fear of the Lord, it will do you well all your life and even until your death. Go ahead, read. To fear the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and it was created with the faithful in the womb. Fearing the Lord also is a spiritual gift is what it's telling you. Remember in Jeremiah, he says, I foreknew you, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, without getting too deep on free will and the one third and two third and who's mm -hmm. what, just understand that we all, no matter what form or shape, have a position to play. And he's telling you to fear the God, that perfect perfection to fear the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And that's what we read in Psalms 111 and 10. And that that was created with the faithful in the womb. It is given to you from your, your, your in uh, conception, mm -hmm. right? When you were conceived, the Most High put certain spiritual gifts inside of you that were waiting to be awakened. So just like there was a Manchurian candidate for evil, mm -hmm. there's also that Manchurian candidate to do the Lord's will. It's like with Samuel when he talks about he was destined for something, but it tells you the Lord was not yet dealing with him mm -hmm. because he hadn't activated that yet, right? Mm -hmm. he, he didn't activate those spiritual gifts in him yet. And that fear of the Lord, it says, it resides with those who was created with the faithful in the womb. Uh, jump to verse, let me see if I'm going to read the rest of this. Uh, hold on, wisdom is that? Yeah, read 19. Let's, let's just go through it, all right? Okay, verse 19. Wisdom reigneth down skill and knowledge of understanding and exalteth them to honor that hold her fast. Wisdom reigneth down skill. Wisdom reigneth down skill and knowledge of understanding. And it exalts them to honor that hold her fast. True wisdom reign of down skill. You're tactful in how you deal with things. You you know, I, I got a complaint of a leader the other day. Uh, uh, some craziness about forbidding a brother to lead to the Sabbath. The brother had to, to, to go to work that evening after the Sabbath. Came, attended, and all that stuff. Freaking blasting the brother, like, in front of people, like, embarrassing him. Yeah. All right? That brother lacks wisdom as a leader. All right? It says wisdom. With wisdom comes skill. And how you handle situations and how you address matters and how you handle things within yourself, how you deal with other brothers and sisters. It says, uh, and knowledge of understanding, and it will exalt to honor that hold her fast. That's why I say, just hold on, hold on to your seats. Don't be, don't be rocked or swayed by the stuff that you see out. There will always be people that come up and speak against us. There will mm -hmm. always be. You just endure and see, and you're gonna see how wisdom is gonna exalt those. We don't have to exalt ourselves, wisdom will exalt us to honor. Okay? Mm -hmm. The root of wisdom is to fear the Lord, and the branches thereof are long life. Fear, 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 fear to God. Hold yourself in that fear. Read. The fear of the Lord driveth away sins, and where it is, pre and where it is present, 
it turneth away wrath. You angry brothers and sisters, it says the fear of the Lord, that's how you deal with it. You, got, you know how I many brothers and sisters, I'm like, oh, I got an anger problem. And you don't fear God. The fear of the Lord is going to drive that thing away, mm -hmm. right? And, and don't be mistaken, wrath will come, right? People who are going to do personal attacks against people, all right? Not pointing out sin, but personal mm -hmm. attacks against people, mm -hmm. they're angry and bitter inside. Mm -hmm. And if you fear the Lord, you'll drive that thing away. How? By reproving those unfruitful works of darkness. Read. A furious man cannot be justified, for the way of his fury shall be his destruction. Remember, there's levels to this. Fury doesn't always manifest in like a mean face and somebody wanting to strike somebody, all right? Furious will manifest itself with slanders, okay? With slanderous talk, with slanderous behavior. And that focus, it says someone like that, they can't be justified. And the sway of his fury is going to be his destruction. Brothers and sisters need to repent from that type of spirit. Mm -hmm. All right, read. A patient man will bear for a time, and afterward joy shall spring up unto him. He will hide his words for a time, and the lips of many shall declare his wisdom. Jump to verse 26. Verse 26. If thou desire wisdom, keep the commandments, and the Lord shall give her Unto thee. That's what Captain Isaac was saying earlier. All this stuff, man, you got to understand that it, it, that's the root and the foundation of it, right? Go ahead, read. For the fear of the Lord is wisdom and instruction, and faith and meekness are his delight. Faith and meekness are his delight. Faith and meekness are the Lord's delight. And you can be a bold, strong spirit and still have that meek spirit, all right? Meekness to what? The, of, to the to God, to the Most High God. That's what the meek spirit is dealing with, all right? Understanding the power that we serve. Um, give me Proverbs 8 and 4. Jump through some of these. I'm supposed to take my daughter to school, take my wife's table. Mm -hmm. yeah, Proverbs 8 and 4. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. Go ahead. O you simple, understand wisdom. And he fools, be he of an understanding heart. This is what the Most High calling us, all right? This is where you at. And even in this walk, don't think just because you're here that you don't that you don't fall into this, all right? This is what I'm saying. You got to hold this thing close, all right? Go ahead. Here, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. For my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. Go ahead. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing forward or perverse in them. This is how you know, man. This is the great mediator right here. All the Most High's words are righteousness. There's no forward or perverse in them. Unlike men mm -hmm. who have forward words, perverse thoughts, you have to understand if the stuff is not coming from the scripture, and I'm sorry, you know what? I, I, I got to talk about it because what it is forward and perverse to put a man's private situation out there on finances to try to make yourself look relevant. Mm -hmm. They're going to go ahead and put your information out there. That, but like, like to me, that's when I was just like, you know, normally I don't, I don't, I don't comment on stuff. I, you know, I stay in my lane. I let other brothers and sisters, I got the spirit to deal with that stuff. Mm -hmm. All right. But uh, what is spiritual or scriptural about something like that? Especially in hypocrisy when, uh, you know, uh, brothers or sisters who were in that situation also receive, you know, financial help and so forth. That's like throwing, you, you, you live in a glass house, but you're throwing rocks. That's why to me is just, is laughable. But I'm know? just gonna put it out there. How about, how about you got paid to, to, to put in the work that everybody thought you were doing? For free. For free. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, oh, this brother worked so hard during the, during the Passover. Brother was getting paid for that. Yep. We don't want to put that out, right? Yep. We, we can put all that out on Facebook. And I don't think. You, you want to go tit for tat? Yeah, I don't think you want to do that. Cause we're like Joe Pesci with it. We'll keep, keep going, keep going, keep going. Nobody, hey, nobody knew about that, right? <laughs> Ridiculous. Go ahead, read. And they didn't have to. They didn't have to. But you want to be petty with that stuff mm -hmm. and say it's a lie. Say it's a lie. Yep. Ridiculous. Proverbs eight and verse six. Here, for I will speak of excellent things. Oh, no, I think we were at eight. Verse eight. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing forward or perverse in them. They are all plain to him that understandeth. God's words are not confusing and it's plain to them that understandeth. It's plain to you that the Sabbath is even to even. All right, read. 
and write to them that find knowledge. Mm, go ahead. Receive my instruction and not silver and knowledge rather than choice gold. And you don't need that filthy lucre. The scripture says you should be focusing on receiving that knowledge. Go ahead. For wisdom is better than rubies and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared. There is to nothing it. compared to the wisdom. Uh, read verse 12. Verse 12. I wisdom dwell with prudence. Wisdom and prudence dwell together. You want prudence? Get some wisdom. You want wisdom? Get some prudence. They, they, they're, they're two. It says they dwell together. Go ahead, read. And find out knowledge of witty inventions. And it finds out knowledge of witty inventions. Wisdom and prudence is the perfect cocktail to help you in this walk. All right. Um. Uh, let me see. I, I might, I might cut it short. The food laws to hate evil pride. No, go ahead. Read, read on. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the froward mouth do i hate you know i gotta look up forward man because right some brothers and sisters you entertain these these people willfully contrary not easily managed mm. you hearing something different than the doctrine that you've been taught that should be sown in your minds it says if you have the fear of the lord you will hate that evilness you will hate that pride and arrogancy you will hate the evil way and the forward mouth mm -hmm. yes the most high says you to hate those things I'm not saying you hate the brother or sister that's talking that because they got a chance to repent of those things if they mm -hmm. come to their senses but you not should be receiving those type of messages that comes from anywhere and everything it says any, you would hate the forward. That could be from the friend that you're too close with at work to the family member that's not in this truth that you're too, too, uh, uh, you're not too much. Uh, what does it say? Uh, be mindful of the time. Mm -hmm. You know, you're with the indiscreet and you're not mindful of the time. All right. It says that stuff should vex your spirit. Like if I'm around my, my carnal family, you know, and I maintain relationships with them, I can't be around them too long mm -hmm. because I know they don't want to receive scripture, but it, you know, if, if something come up, it is, is going to be said anyway, you know, mm -hmm. that's, that's just me. Mm -hmm. But I don't mean I'm sitting there wasting my time teaching them. I know they ain't trying to receive it. Um, but the carnal talk, I can't be around like my mom, bro. She talks about his politics. Mm. It's hard for me to be around her. She's on the Trump bandwagon, uh, which is beyond me, all right? <laughs> my mom's a freaking Puerto Rican from the Bronx, and she's over here on, on Trump's uh, uh, rhetoric. Dang. You know, she, yeah, she, well, lifelong Democrat. All of a sudden, she's a Republican. But I don't know. I don't know. It's her old age or something <laughs> like that. But you know, I, I can't be about certain brothers that all they talk about is sports. Mm -hmm. Right? And don't get me wrong, man. I, I'm still not fully repentant of that. I don't really watch it as much as I used to and stuff. But, you know, I'll check the scores. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I might watch a little bit of a game here and there. Okay? Ain't no sin in that. Right? Because my priority is this. But my mind hasn't transcended that. You know what I'm saying? There's still certain things, you know. I mean, I could talk about, you know, I teach self-defense. I'll talk about fighting yeah. all day. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? But... I can't be around certain spirits, right, that are contrary. To be forward is contrary to what the Lord says. Mm -hmm. So it's uncomfortable for me after a certain, like, I have a limit. You know, my prepaid card runs out on tolerance, mm -hmm. and I can't <laughs> deal with it, you know? Where we at? What verse? That was verse uh, 13. Uh, Yeah, go ahead. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. All right, hold on. I might want you to jump so we can start wrapping this up. Uh, Hold on, hold on. Uh, nope, I don't need that. Okay, let's jump. Let's go to 2 Peter 1 and 8. We're almost done. So let's go back to where it started with 2 Peter. I want to read 8 through 11. And then we'll finish. Peter's, yeah. Uh, 1 and 8? 1 and 8, yeah. And we'll 2 Peter's 1 and 8. For if, for if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Read on. But he that lacketh these things is blind. If you don't have godliness, if you don't have virtue, all right, if you don't have prudence, temperance, all these things that we spoke about, it says you are blind. So you, based on what came out today, you examine who's blind and who's in the light. Mm -hmm. You examine who's in the right and who's in the wrong. Y'all reflect and meditate on that because mm -hmm. we can talk at you all day. But unless you have all these steps in you, right, you're walking in a natural state and not a spiritual state. And you won't receive it anyway, so it's wasted air. Go ahead, read. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off. No vision. They can't see the future, what the end result is. Go ahead. 
and have forgotten that he was purged oh, from his man, old that's sins. That's so heavy. If you lack these things, you forget of the sacrifice that Christ was there for. You forget that you were a repenting man or woman and that you're walking in this thing. It says you forget that you were purged from your old sins. And what happens with that? You start to backpedal into those old sins. Go ahead. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. Diligence. This is what I was talking about in the beginning. You need to focus on that virtue and godliness. We get complacent. We get comfortable in this walk and in this truth because the fear resides, right? It starts, it starts to subside a little bit. You get a little comfortable because you know a little something. You learned a little something. You feel knowledge puffeth up. Mm -hmm. But it also tells you wisdom, reign of down skill. And it's not just in how you deal with matters, but how you deal with self. It starts with that first. All right? Go ahead, read. But if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. It says if you do, if you give diligence, if you do all these things that Peter has spoken about up until this point. Right? This is a great summation mm -hmm. of when you're ever feeling like, damn, man, I'm, I'm struggling with something. And, 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 and take these notes and take this stuff and take these precepts and say, damn, this stuff should set you back right on track. Mm -hmm. It says, if you do these things, you won't fall. I think I was hearing Bishop, there was an excerpt that he brought out about something about, um, you know, you can, all of us can be susceptible to stumble. Absolutely. Absolutely. But it's when you keep yourself down. This is what the scripture says, the righteous man fall of seven times. But he gets back up. Mm -hmm. But he gets back up. But you gotta, you gotta swallow that pride. Yes. And some yeah. brothers think that if they swallow their pride, they're gonna choke. Like the bishop said, "What man ever choked swallowing pride?" Man, listen, you you ain't gonna die. That's what it means. What man ever choked swallowing pride? You don't. The answer is you don't. No mm -hmm. man's ever choked swallowing pride. When you <laughs> have, when you have your whole family, sons, daughters, asking you and telling you, "Um, uh, did you leave the truth?" When you have your own wife. Or your own husband telling you, hey, did, did you leave the truth? That's time for self-examination. Because there's multitude and a plethora of witnesses pointing the finger at you. That's time for self-examination. Hey, hey man, you got to take a look, man. I, and if you have any fear, man, you'll really examine that thing. And put yourself in a frame of mind and say, what the hell am I doing? Bro, that pride is crap. Snap man. out of it. Hey, pride, let me tell you something. Pride is an ancient, powerful, evil demon. Pride is no joke. Pride is no joke. This is why the stuff that we're bringing out, it's the opposite of that. To be meek, to be humble, to be in the fear of the Lord, to be godly, to have virtue, sagacity. All right? I look, bro, sagacity. Every time I hear that word, I, dang, got to remind myself, sagacity. Got to be sagacious. Read on. Read verse 11. Verse 11. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly. Then this narrow gate, this narrow path that seems narrow to everybody else won't be so narrow to you. If you give diligence to make your calling and election sure by doing these things, it says, for then an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly. For something to be ministered means it has to be delivered to you, right? We talk a lot about spiritual gifts and everybody wants to discern spirits or, or break down dark sayings. Hey, I, the, the spiritual gifts I want the most is, is discernment to understand between good and evil, mm -hmm. wisdom, all right? It's an honor for me. You know what? One of the things I always pray for when I'm praying right? It's for the wisdom to be able to bring these scriptures out to the people properly because it's an honor to be able to teach God's chosen. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about that. The Lord has allowed me to be a messenger. Never in a thousand years would I have thought that I would be where I'm at today. And from, from, from the offices of administration to the whole, to being able to bring out the scriptures to, to so special a people that's nigh unto the most high. Mm -hmm. And I don't take that thing lightly. I look at that thing and I say to myself, damn, I got to be careful what I put out there. I got to make sure that I'm circumspect in what I bring out because I can destroy a brother or sister. Yep. And then blood will be on our hands. And then that blood is on my hand. That's not a brother that fears the Lord. That's not a sister that fears the Lord. We must be mindful and circumspect at all times with this. That proverbial walking on eggshells. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, read verse 11 again. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Wherefore, I will not be negligent. No, just 11, I wanted. Mm -hmm. So it says, so then that entrance will be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom. All right, last scripture. Let's get Philippians 4 and 1. Philippians 4 and 1. Philippians 4 and 1. 
This is the book of Philippians chapter 4 and verse 1. Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved and longed for, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. Man, I love that, man. That's how I feel about my people, man. That's how I feel. That's what I'm saying. It's like an honor. Bro, I get emotional when I think about that thing. When I'm praying to the most high on that stuff, I, I and it, it's because it, it humbles me. And it puts me in a frame of mind to, to be circumspect and what and what's brought out. It, you, you can't go around willy-nilly on a whim, mm -hmm. bringing out doctrine that can destroy so much souls. Go ahead, read. Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved and longed for, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. I beseech you, Dias, and beseech Synth... 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 Oh, damn, how you pronounce it? Uh, I don't know. Synth... Synthic? Synthic. <laughs> that they be of the same mind in the Lord. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow. Hey, I love that. We're yoke fellows because we're prisoners with Christ, right? We in this bondage to Christ, a beautiful bondage, because mm -hmm. being bondage to the most high in Christ is, is very different than being in bondage to this wicked carnal world. Mm -hmm. He says, I entreat thee also, my true yoke fellow. Go mm -hmm. ahead. Help those women which labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other my fellow laborers, whose names are in the book of life. Mm, yeah, and that's the book that I was talking about earlier when it talks about with the arrows and everything else, if you wind up, like, you, you don't leave anything behind, there's no trail behind, you're not going to be in that book. We need to make our mark in this walk to the Most High. Go ahead. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Always, through everything. A lot of us, brothers and sisters, be getting depressed or whatever it is. It says, we should rejoice in the Lord always. And then he says, hey, and again, I tell you, rejoice. Go ahead. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. That's that circumspect. That's that moderation that we're talking about. It says, let that moderation, let that example of how you deal and how you walk in this, let that be known to all men. All right? So that, that that's not just talking about believers and unbelievers, Jake and not Jake. You have to be an example to everybody. All right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, read. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. When he says be careful for nothing, what he says, don't, don't mean don't be cautious. He means don't be worried. Don't be depressed. Don't be caught up in your own mind. He says be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, giving thank always, you can request. The, the Lord is going to provide for He will show a way. All right, go ahead, read. And the peace of God, which passeth, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. And you see, and that's that peace of God, man, is a comforting spirit. That's the type of spirit, man, that knowing, this why I say you don't be worried, you're not careful enough, that whatsoever comes upon thee, you still take cheerfully, you take rejoicefully, and you're always rejoicing because you know the Lord's going to show a way for good or bad. I see death differently since this walk. Mm -hmm. I see sickness differently since this walk. Yeah, in the moment, you get caught up in those things. There's emotions and stuff involved. But longer term, if the, that peace of God, man, that quenches all that stuff. Go ahead, read. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things of good rapport, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. He's telling you, use virtue. It, so he says, whatsoever things are honest, just, pure, lovely, good report, Make sure that if you have virtue, you'll be able to know what those that whatsoever is, mm -hmm. if it is good, if it's lovely, if it's it, you wouldn't be confused about stuff that's being brought out. Mm -hmm. You would understand fully if there be any virtue. Go ahead. And if there be any praise, think on these things. Last scripture. Go ahead. Verse mm -hmm. nine. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Mm. All these things that are brought out, all those things that are here in the scriptures for you, it tells you, you both learn and receive it. Because it's one thing to learn it, it's another thing to receive it. And you know how you receive something? By application, by showing and doing. That's how, that's how you know. You have to put it into action. I can show you something. I can talk at you all day. Until you do it yourself, you're never going to be able to get it. I can break down how to throw a punch, how to throw a kick, how, how to deal with somebody choking or whatever, right, when mm -hmm. I do the self-defense. It's through applying it that you learn. Mm -hmm. It's through applying it. That's the only way. You have to do it yourself. All right? You have to go through those motions yourself. It says, and the God of peace shall be with you. We already broke down how, how great that peace in the Lord is. All right? Um, you got anything else you want to bring up? 
Uh, nope. All praises to the Most High, Captain Yasha, for a very, very, very good class. All praises. I, all I, praises. I pray you, brothers and sisters online, take heed to it. Brothers and sisters, beware of wolves in sheep clothing. Oh, man, you got to. You got to. And I'm telling you, it starts with godliness. Listen, if you're confused about anything, you need to reset. You need to go ahead, reset computers, and, and, and assess yourself and see if you got that godliness and that virtue. You, you can't be playing games with this. You got to make your calling and election sure. Don't be, don't be carried about with diverse doctrines to and mm-hmm. fro. All right? Be rooted. Be strong. Um, all right, all praises, man. So Lord's will, you know, I'll be able to do some of these, trying to get myself a little more involved with the daily bread. So mm-hmm. every now and then you'll, you'll, Lord's will see me jumping on here. And uh, it was a pleasure to be able to have uh, Captain Isaac here with Pleasure's me. Mine. Brother's going to be out here with me for the week. Yep. All Pleasure's, right, all Pleasure's praises mine. to the most high. He visited Pleasure's me mine. out here. Uh, me and this brother go back, man. You know, we've been in the trenches together. So uh, I got a lot of respect for this man. So Likewise. it vexes me when I see people try to say something crazy about you, bro, because I know your dedication to this, man. All praises. So, all, praises. all right. All right. With that, we say shalom. Most high Christ bless. Most high Christ bless.